Hello and welcome to Science Works Online. You're watching Between Two Beakers with me, your host, Chris Solo. First, let me tell you a little bit about Science Works in case you haven't been able to visit us in Oregon. Science Works is a hands on museum with lots of exhibits that help people of all ages learn about science. With us being online, we thought it'd be a great way to connect with students and families all over the world. We have a lot of exciting demonstrations, experiments in store for you in the coming weeks. We also will bring in science experts to talk about their fields and answer any of your questions. But before we get into today's facilitated activity, we're going to take a quick break and be right back for some exciting news with Maya. Welcome, Maya. Hello, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I got some exciting news today. Some, hopefully, some stuff that'll cheer us up. Our first bit of news today is our Mars Rover 2020 is no longer nameless. Meet Perseverance, our new <laughs> Mars Rover. I mean, our new ambassador to Mars. He was named by Alex Mather, a seventh grader, who wrote and submitted an essay on the perseverance of mankind. And that's how we got the name Perseverance. He won a prize to go see the launch of Perseverance in July from Cape Carnival, Florida. So that's pretty exciting. Awesome. Our next bit of news features my favorite animal, the water bear. If you've never heard of, have you heard of a water bear, Chris? I, I have not, actually. Oh, they are so fun. They are small organisms that are pretty <laughs> much indestructible. You can oh. smash them, you can burn them, you can throw them into space, and they will still survive. Uh, our expert, our education specialist, Ash, just informed me that you can find water bears under uh, rocks and in the moss. If you have a microscope at home, you can go look for your water bears and tell this reporter if she did a good job at drawing a water bear because <laughs> it featured the actual photo that won the, uh, the image contest of 2019. So our second bit of news is water bears won the best image in the Americas. Keith Porter, he took a picture of a water bear under a microscope. These parts of the water bear are its brain and its digestive system. He lit them up with fluorescent dye and wow. the image is really pretty. Again, this is my drawing. So you can go to Olympus image of the year 2019 to see if I did a good job at drawing. The first prize went to a doctoral student in Spain for a slice of mouse brain that was also lit up with fluorescent dye. So if you wanna win the best image awards, go out there and get some fluorescent dye. <laughs> and that's all the news from ScienceWorks today. I'm Maya. Thank you, Maya, so much for that exciting news. Uh, learned something new today. Uh, so uh, last Tuesday, we built straw rockets and I promised you all a demo video and I will show that to you all right now. Now in the wilderness to test our straw rockets. I'm gonna do it once uh, live and then I'll do one slow-mo so we can see what actually happens. Here we go. Yeah. All right, take two. We have a different rocket now with some squirreled fins on the end of it. Let's see how this does. I'm pretty good, let's go check. Here we go, landed safely. Awesome. Uh, let's do another one, we're gonna do another one slow motion.
And there we have it. We tried two different rockets. Um, we liked the straw rocket that actually had a tighter uh, grip, which allowed for more thrust, I think. Uh, and uh, the slow-mo stuff was pretty cool. So we'll see you all later. All right. Uh, now, a big special warm welcome to our uh, curiosity expert, Ash, to talk about what we are going to do today. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm good, thanks. So, uh, are you ready to work on today's engineering project? I am. And we can do some fun experiments with physics today with this project, too. So, Chris, have you ever gone ziplining? I have. I actually really do enjoy that. Yeah, it's really fun, and uh, since zipline parks aren't open right now, I thought maybe we could make our own zipline at home. Uh, so if we want to send a toy from one side of the house to the other, uh, we can make our own little zipline, and people at home can even make a couple of ziplines and have zipline races with this project. Oh, that'd be fun. So, uh, let's see. It looks like you've got all your materials ready to go. I think so. First thing we're going to do is set up the zipline itself. So, for people at home, uh, probably a good idea to make sure that you have an area where everybody agrees to not go walking in that area for a little while. Uh, especially if you're going to use a door or something to anchor your zipline, make sure that everyone agrees they're not going to open that door for a while because that will mess up your zipline. <laughs> so for the zipline, uh, you're going to start out with uh, some string. Got some string. And it's like you've got some nice string there. Yeah. Where are you going to anchor your zipline? Uh, I'm going to have to get creative, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I have something I can hang it from. Okay. Yeah, okay. Does it matter how long it is? Um, it depends on how far you want your toy to travel. Uh, okay. you definitely want it to be maybe more than two feet. Okay. So if we have the zip line going, like, really, really straight up and down, it's not really going to be a zip line. It'll be more like falling with a string attached. <laughs> so we, we want to have it at an angle, and if you guys were watching when we did straw rockets, we talked about that 45-ish degree angle that uh, is really good for launching a projectile. So, so we can play around with the angles and see what angles give us the best, <clears throat> uh, fastest zip line. Got it. Uh, now, is this a good angle, or do I need to go higher? Uh, I think we can just experiment. Where do yeah. you want to start out? Which angle do you want to start out with? Uh, I think I'm going to have to find out where I can tie this off or tape this off. That's also going to be a factor is where can you anchor your zipline. Alright. So ziplines actually, the first people who kind of were using ziplines were wildlife biologists in jungles. They needed to get up and down from tree canopies really quickly. And they needed to be able to get their supplies up into the tree canopy or down from the tree canopy really quickly. Oh, that looks like you've got it nice and tight there. All right. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, have you got a toy or a figure you want to send down the zip line? I do. All right. There he is. Looks good. We want to give him a little harness to start out. He's a let's rubber give band? Him, yeah, let's give him like a rubber band harness to anchor him into our zipline basket. Okay. That way, if the zipline suddenly stops and tips over, he won't fall out and go crashing down to the floor. Yeah, we wouldn't want that. <laughs> no, definitely. All right. want to be safe. Okay, so you've got your, your little rubber band harnessed on there. I do. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little gondola or basket for your character to ride in. Okay, we use that cup for that? Yeah, you've got, I see you've got a paper cup. That's great. 
Um, if you don't have a paper cup or a plastic cup at home, I've also done this by cutting down a plastic bottle or cutting down a cardboard okay. that's toilet paper tube. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut down your cup until it's about three inches tall. Okay. Okay. And then if you've got a pen, we're going to make... Uh, two little marks okay. on your cup, like on either side. You're going to try to make as straight a line as you can across the diameter of the cup. Okay. Is that what, the, is that what the hole punch is for? Yeah, you're going to punch your holes there. And if you don't have a hole punch at home, uh, you can probably use a sharp pencil and carefully poke a couple of holes in the side of your cup or you might be able to use the pointy part of the scissors. So next thing we're going to do is take a, a two rubber bands. Okay. And you're going to take your first rubber band and kind of thread it through one of your holes that you just made. Okay. And we're going to make a little knot in the rubber band by slipping uh, one end of it through the other, and then ah. just kind of gently pulling it. Gotcha. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. And do the same thing on the and other side? We'll do the, yep, do the same thing on the other side. All right. And this is and then, what is going to attach to... Yeah, we're going to attach this to our little mechanism we're going to make to be able to move your zip line down, well, move your gondola down the zip line. Before we move on to that part, let's try to get your character secured in there. Okay. So he's got his little harness, and then uh, where do you think would be a good attachment point for that harness? Um... Probably above it, where these two things will maybe meet. Yeah, so maybe we'd uh, secure all of those together. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Um, I think, do you have a binder clip? I do. So what we're going to use for our zip line today is a, kind of a quick release mechanism with a binder clip. So let's gather up all your rubber bands and let's kind of secure them all together. Okay. And for people who are making this at home, if you don't have a binder clip, you can actually attach your rubber bands directly to the next part of your zip line. You'll just have to kind of tie it in place. Or you could use some other mechanism, like use a bread tie or, uh, you know, a clip, a, p a paper clip. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can kind of come up with our own ideas and improve on this design. So the next thing we're going to do, Chris, could we send this down the zip line as it is right now? Um... I mean, we could try, but we've already attached our rope, so there's no way for the rope right. to go in, and it would probably drag on the rope as well. Yeah, we'd get a lot of friction if we put that metal onto the rope, so it would kind of drag, like you said, and slow down our zip line. So what we want to do is we want to make a little device that's going to give us a pulley so we can put our pulley on top of the string, and the pulley will just roll down on the string. Got it. So what we need is, I'm looking and I, am I seeing like a little tiny carabiner? Or is that an unfolded uh, paper clip up above your, your wheel? Yeah, these are paper clips. Oh, it's a chain of paper clips. Yeah. Okay. So let's take the one paper clip. Okay. And we're going to unfold it. So we're going to kind of make a straight axle got it okay and that's also another thing you could try at home if you have a carabiner uh you could try 
attaching a carabiner to the top of your mechanism. But yeah. I think the pulley is going to give us the smoothest, least friction that, that we're going to get. Got it. Okay, so I notice you've got a little, it looks like an interior of a Lego wheel. Can yes, you show I that? do. Okay, can you show us really close? All right, so Chris is going to use the inside of a Lego wheel, but if you turn it to the side, you notice it kind of looks like a spool. So if you have a spool at home, you could try that. And I'm also going to talk to you about a way we could make a pulley out of two bottle caps in a minute. Okay. But for now, let's slip your pulley onto the axle. Like that? Yeah. Actually, it's a little too tight, I realize. Oh, so we can make an adjustment. Yeah. So when we're engineering, uh, we can always modify our materials if we need to, and we can adjust what we're making. Yeah, we definitely didn't want it to touch your pulley system. No, because then it won't turn smoothly. All right. Got it. Okay. So will your uh, wheel turn on the axle? Yep. Great. Now we're going to attach that axle to the binder clip. Got it. So how do you think you might do that um i mean i could use my needle nose pliers and make some hooks and like have it like hook on there i guess yeah that's a great idea so for people who are building at home uh you notice to, uh chris has a set of little needle nose pliers so you could use that um you could also use tweezers uh maybe you could use a pencil to bend your wire around or if you have a, somebody at home with really strong fingers, you can actually build, uh, bend this wire just with your fingers. But the pliers are a little bit easier. Yeah. On your you okay. can make a tight bend. So I have it ready. So okay. To attach to the rope, I guess. Awesome. You ready to try it out? Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to launch our zip line. And sometimes getting that pulley onto the zip line can take a couple of tries. Yeah. All right. I think I'm ready. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All right, let's launch it. You gonna count down or we're just gonna launch it? Yeah, I'll give you a countdown from three. Three, two, one, launch. Oh, well, that went pretty fast. Went really fast, yeah. So one thing we could try if we want to do an experiment, sure. we could figure out what makes the zip line go slower or faster and what things we would need to do to change our zip line to go as fast as we possibly can. Got it. So what could we do? Well, let's think. What's one thing we could change to make it go faster? Well, uh, we can change the pitch. I can have mm -hmm. it come down at a steeper angle, um, right. which would make it go really fast. Yeah, so we could change the pitch of the line itself. And I'm wondering if the weight of the basket would make it go faster. Yeah. I mean, the, the heavier the basket would be, it would, the pull right. down would be much faster, yeah. So uh, one thing we could do would be uh, add something to the bottom of the basket sure. or, like, you know, hot glue a little bolt to the bottom of the basket, something like that. Yeah, I have, what can I put in there? I have a little paint container that's got just a little bit of paint in it. I could probably Yeah, we could try that. Dan Ruby had a suggestion of what if we oh. changed our line and used waxed floss, like waxed dental floss. I think that would be a great thing to try. Yeah. So we could actually try different uh, materials for the line, or like fishing line. Oh yeah, either one because it's the it's uh this this rope has got 
friction on it anyway, so something right, smooth like that. Right, got some yeah. texture. So that's another thing we could try. You want to try another launch? Sure. We have a paint bucket All in right. there. He's delivering paint. Like you got it. Three, <laughs> two, one, launch. Nope. Oh. That looked a lot faster. Yeah. So for people who want to do some experiments at home about how fast can you go, if you have a timer, uh, if you can uh, use somebody's cell phone and use their stopwatch function, you can actually time. I would make a little sheet with a grid that listed the materials you used and then the time it took. Yeah. So that way you can kind of get uh, some good data about what's going to... You could also use, like, uh, list what kind of material you made your line from. So that way you could really have a record in your science notebook and and do turn this into a real experiment. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I think anyone who's watching at home, go ahead and create your own zip line, uh, come up with your own ideas and things. And you can either tag us on social media at scienceworks online, uh, or you can, uh, upload those and email those pictures and ideas to, uh, online at scienceworksmuseum.org. Either way, we'd love to see all the cool experiments that you have. Uh, yes, please. Ash, you had mentioned, um, earlier something about an alternate, uh, pulley system. Oh, yeah. We can make, uh, if you have a hot glue gun, uh, we, and you have a couple of twist-off soda caps or just any kind of a cap like what Chris is showing you, you can actually make your own pulleys. And so what you're going to do is you're going to hot glue two of the same kind of caps together so that the hollow part's on the outside. You're just going to put a little kind of a dot of hot glue in the middle and then you'll just gently hammer a nail through the inside of the cap Got it. so that you can slide your axle through there. And so one That's thing cool. you could do is experiment with all different kind of things you could make pulleys from like lids, uh, twist off caps. Yeah, you got that cardboard tube that we could slice up and maybe make into some pulleys. So uh, if you scientists at home want to try out making some different kind of pulleys and trying those with your zip line, that would be something awesome to share with us too. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks, Chris. Did you have any other information or uh, things you wanted to share with our people at home? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to my inspiration for this project. I was uh, looking through a book called Junk Drawer Engineering, and uh, we've got some information about the author of that book. He's written a bunch of really fun books uh, that you can do chemistry, physics, life science, with just stuff you have around the house that doesn't really cost anything, so you don't have to go out and buy any special equipment. Got it. Very cool. So that's... Uh, that's been really fun talking you through the zipline, Chris. Are you going to try out any other uh, tests today? Uh, I am. We're actually going to go outside real quick uh, where I'm going to demonstrate a, a zipline kind of in its full full length. So uh, oh, let's awesome. go ahead and take a look at that. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks. We've built our, our pulley and our harness, like what Ash had suggested. We used this Lego piece as the actual pulley. We used a paper clip to hold to the binder clip, which holds to the rubber band, which holds our little adventurer on this little cup. And I'm gonna get him in position and show you. As you look down, this line goes all the way down there. So. I actually did two test runs, because that's what a true scientist does, right? It's two test runs. I ran two test runs and realized the angle was not high enough and the weight of the basket was not heavy enough to go. So to compensate, I put a small rock in the, in the cup and I actually have to pull the rope up just a little bit and then it gets going. So without further ado, let's go ahead and... All right, here we go. Launching in three, two, one, lift off. Let's go see if he made it okay. Ooh, ooh. 
And there he is, safe and sound. So we thank you all for this fun experiment. Uh, go ahead and try yourself and tag us at ScienceWorks Online on social media or email us at online at scienceworksmuseum.org. And we'll see you all later. Bye. And welcome back. So we have gone through um, an exciting way to build your own zip line. We've demonstrated a few different ways and gone through some other uh, potential issues and things you may or may not run into. Something else I did want to add, you have to be careful with your paper clips when you're trying to make these adjustments, especially small ones. You only get maybe two or three bends in them before they break. Um, so that's just also something to consider. Um, bigger paper clips, you get a little bit more bend. Um, Ash, did you have anything else you wanted to add to the zip line demonstration? Uh, just uh, keep trying. Sometimes it might take a lot of tries. And if you're like me, you might have to take a little break and come back to it. But uh, part of engineering is just, uh, ex you know, being okay with uh, things not always turning out perfect and sometimes making some adjustments. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So we do want to send everybody uh, out with uh, a few science jokes. And if you have your own science jokes, please email them to online at science, uh, scienceworksmuseum.org. We'd love to hear them. But Ash, I hear that you have a few jokes for me. Yeah, I heard you uh, really like bad science jokes. <laughs> I am a dad, so I do like dad jokes. So I have a few bad <laughs> science jokes for you today. Um, Chris... Do you know, uh, how do you stop an astronaut's baby from crying? Uh, I, I don't know. You rock it. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. How do scientists freshen their breath? How do scientists freshen their breath? Um, that's a great question. I, I don't know. With experiments. <laughs> Oh, man, these are good. And let's do... Okay, I got two more, actually. Because one of them kind of builds on the other. What do you call a fish with no eye? With no eye? Mm-hmm. Fish? A fish, yeah. <laughs> and then what do you call a fish with eight eyes? Fish. Oh, see, you're so good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, so thank you uh, all for joining us today. Um, uh, Dan, Dan Ruby had a question, Chris. Oh, he did. He asked, uh, is there a YouTube channel? Uh, there is a YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know if we have that link ready. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Do um, you have any other jokes, Ash, that we can... Oh yeah, hang on. All right, so what kind of tree can fit in your hand? Ha! A palm tree? That's right. See, you're really good at these science jokes. And, uh, let's see. Do you have time for one more? Sure. Let's do it. Have you heard about the electric detective? No, I have not. His name is Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, these are fantastic. Um, Thank you. Well, that is it here from Science Works Online with Between Two Beakers with myself, Chris, and Ash. Uh, you can join us on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, Ash, do you know what activity we're going to be doing on Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday we are going to be making a science notebook. Oh, uh, nice. People can use to write down all of our uh, activities we do and all their own experiments. And I just want to add that Dan Ruby had a really good add on to that Sherlock Holmes joke. Sherlock Holmes' sidekick is Dr. Watson. <laughs> oh, goodness, I love it. Um, well, looking very, uh, looking very much forward to uh, Tuesday's show to build our own science journal so we can log all of our cool experiments, the trials, the things that worked, things that didn't, how we can improve. Um, oh, man, I'm very excited. So thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you on Tuesday. All right. Bye, scientists. <laughs>